But then I have to start again. <laughs> Go ahead. It's okay. Yeah. So, so who is the CEO? It can be CEO. A CEO should, a CEO person, a person who's, a person who I think should be a CEO, and who deserves the title, who actually has earned the title. Okay, is a person who's been responsible throughout his career for profit and loss. Okay, that's the guy that I think deserves, or he or she needs to deserve, or a guy who knows if he's not been pro, who, or a guy who's not been responsible for directly profit and loss. He should be an innovator. He should be a leader. Okay, he should lead by example. In our companies, what we have is that we our the best part about Groupon is that our CEO. Our reception when our receptionist is absent, he comes and sits sits at the reception. Okay, that's how down to earth you need to be in order for your company to grow. Because that your company will only suffer in life if your employees go too big in their head. Okay, you gotta keep them low. You gotta take that air out of their head. You gotta let them know that listen, look. In our company, we have no managers. We don't believe. We, regardless, even if I'm a manager, I don't care. There's no manager. We don't. We talk to each other with total respect. Okay. We are friends at the end of the day, it's teamwork. Okay, if there's no team, you can't be a CEO. You need a team. Okay, uh, so, you know, that these are all things that come in play. You have to be, you know, and you have to be, you have to be energetic. You have to be, you have to have that, um, you know, you can't, you have to be a lively person. You you can never, I mean, if you come to a C, if you come in your, if you walk inside your company and you're the CEO, I think that you should be like the total, the most energetic guy or the girl or the guy who's like, you know, totally humble, very nice, but at the end of the day, getting work done. When it comes to work, no bullshit, you know, straight to the point, get work done, results oriented. But at the same time, you need to have a friendly nature. Okay, why? Because if you're friendly, your staff will love you. Okay, your staff loves you, regardless of how much you pay them, you can pay them nicks and dimes. They wouldn't care. Okay, why? Because at the end of the day, they know that they are well respected by all of their co-workers, by their top management, and you know, that's about it. People, employees are only hungry for respect they only want appreciation they don't want anything else That's right. money is a secondary okay my ceo in the morning i swear if my ceo and my manager HR looks at me and smiles that's it i do well the entire day why i give 110 percent why because i want that smile to be i want them to smile again i want that to be redundant okay and that will only be redundant if my performance is there, my performance will only be there if my morale is there. What is going to keep my morale high? My CEO. Okay, my manager HR. My line managers. Okay. I'm a guy who doesn't believe in, I, I hate to say this, but I'm a guy who doesn't believe in line managers. I've never reported to someone. I've only reported to the key man, to the CEO. Why? I think that I have 110% um, abilities to grow and my line managers can only cut me down because why? They love to take credit for your work. Okay, I, I, I don't like that. I'm not that sort of a guy because I know 110% of what I can deliver and my deliverables. The first thing I ask my any company that I join is that, what do you expect out of me? Tell me, openly. I don't tell them what I can do. I keep them in the dark. I tell them, listen, you tell me what the hell is your requirements for me. What do you want from me? Tell me. Okay? My job as an employee, you're paying me to do that, right? Tell me. Be open. Be frank about it. What do you want? And talk to me on numbers. Why? On my resume, I make sure that I put in my job description, yeah, little points here and there, yeah, this is what I did, this is what I did. But I make sure I put in my achievements. When I look at people's resumes, oh, I do this. Dude, we know what an account manager does. We know what a, what, we know what a finance manager does. We know what a marketing manager does. We know what a brand manager does. You don't, I hate the fact when I look at resumes and when I'm screening resumes and it says that I, I, was, the, I was a brand manager and this is what I, I was responsible for this. This, this, we know that, man, because your job, your job title explains everything. It's, you know, we're not anyone who's an HR manager or anyone who's a CEO does not need to know what a brand manager does. We already know what a brand manager. Does. That's why we are four. That's why we are the people behind the four feet table. Now that's why we're there because we know what we're doing. Okay, so I hate going through resumes where it says, you know, this complete BS. You know, and it's copy pasted. You can easily tell. Okay, from Google. So the point is what they need to do is that they need to write. What people want to see, if you want to be a high achiever in life, what people want to see on your resume is only numbers. Only numbers. Okay, what did you do? What What did you make? Ha There's three sorts of people in the world. One, who make things happen. Two, who watch things happen. And three, who just wonder how the hell did it happen. 
always want to be in the first top category of people who make things happen. It doesn't mean that I have to be Einstein and I have to invent something to make things happen. Okay, I don't have to do something big. I don't have to be known like Bill Gates. No. Make things happen is that whatever the job or task that you get, you make things happen in that job description. You make sure that when you leave the company, people behind your, they talk highly behind your back. Okay, you look at my resume now, I'm still in the company and I'm applying at all these places, right? To look at, everyone has a right to grow. So if my manager HR, if someone calls my manager HR and says, oh, Nabil applied for a job here, I don't care if my manager HR gets to call. Why? Because of the fact that I have the right to grow. Secondly, I'm not doing anything wrong with the company. I'm not working unethically with any other company at the times of what visa I am on. I, I'm not. I am not into any unethical practices. Okay, I'm a complete legit guy. So basically, the uh, only person who's going to hide, oh please don't make sure, or don't say this to them, or don't please don't call, or who's going to be afraid to give references in life of their direct bosses with people who have things to hide behind their back. Uh, you look at my resume. Only my CEOs of all the ten years of. 10 years of companies that i worked in, 10 years, it's been a decade I've been working. In a decade, all my CEOs are my references. And they're not my dads, they're not my uncles, they're, I don't know them, there's no blood relations. Okay, but I'm 110% confident that anyone blind calls them at 2 in the morning, they say Nabil. That's all they need to hear to say whatever I know that they're going to say. Okay, why? Because I hold that sort of credibility. Okay, and that's what people, that's it, that is it. And at the end of the day, I can only go to sleep at night. What makes me sleep at night? Okay, I'm a guy, I'm, I consider myself very blessed by God. That instantly, if you tell me to lie down right now on the floor here, instantly I'll go to sleep. I think that's a complete blessing from God. You can be a multi-billionaire, but you can't sleep. I can sleep. Why? I owe no money to no one in my life. All, I have nine credit cards in Pakistan and, and UAE. Okay, and in the US, and guess what? All of them are stand on zero bank statement. Okay, zero outstanding. Okay, and I owe no money to no one. I'm a self-made guy, and I've, I'm responsible for nine people of my family. I have five younger brothers, one sister, my mom and dad. No one works in my house. Okay, I'm the only one who's supporting them. So when I go into gatherings of my friends who are like 26, done their MBAs from IBA and top universities in Pakistan and top universities of the world, and when I sit with them, I was like, listen, boss, the point is that what I've achieved, okay, I don't need to, well, you know, I never feel, I never feel down, I never feel, I never have that inferiority complex, I'm never complexed in my life, never, I don't care what car you have, where you live, okay, where you study from, okay, what your background is, because I know that at the end of the day, at my age, at the age of 14, you are not supporting nine people of your family, in a very well manner, meaning you're not, not hand to mouth. In, into into the top schools, my brothers were going to the top schools of Karachi. Okay, my mom and dad were they, they didn't they, they didn't have to think before they had to buy something. Okay, at the age of 14, I was able to do that for my family. That's amazing. So I can 100% sure that is why I get attracted. That's why older girls get attracted to me. I don't know why. My mom hates that, but that that's just part of me. That happens. Why does that happen? Because they, what do girls look for in a guy? Okay, I know I'm going off topic right now, but still, what do girls look for in a guy? They look for security. Their future security, okay, they look for loyalty, they look for sincerity, and they look for a stable guy. Okay, they look for a guy who at the end of the day can take care of them. Anyone who says money is the root of all evil doesn't have any. Money can buy happiness, look at a smile on my face, you know. So, it, money, at the end of the day, money stands where oxygen stands on a God I have it level, on a God I have it scale. Huh? That's still a mystery. I've left that to my mom. I know even though I'm living in the 21st century, but I've left this to my mom because I think that you can only be happy if your mom is happy in life. You know? So I've literally left this in my mom. I've told her and she tells me that you have the right to get married to whoever you want. Let us know the girl. I was like, no. I've, I've done my part of my life. I've been responsible for you guys for nine years. Now it's your job. Do you do what? Just one part of your job, which is get me a girl of your choice. I don't mind. I'm not going to ask you a second question. Okay? Why? Because at the end of the day, I can only be happy if she's happy. And at the end of the day, God will only be happy if my mom's happy. Okay? Because after Allah, the second person that you should be proud of, and the second person that you should report to, your boss, forget your CEO, your boss is your mom. Okay? So if she's happy, everyone's happy.